Okay, we're going to have to hold it. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for bearing uh, in the cold to be a collective voice right here, right now. Right now. Right, right now. Let's right take a little now. breath. Right? I'm Jen Mangrum. Uh, as Renee told you, I'm a former elementary classroom teacher, a curriculum facilitator. I'm a faculty member with the National Padea Center, which is a group that strongly believes that children learn best doing authentic projects that include the arts. Yeah! Currently, as Renee told you, I'm an associate professor in teacher education, and in that um, and in that role, I created or co-founded, excuse me, the STEM Teacher Leader Collaborative, which is a structure that supports and collaborates with teachers to help students engage in engineering and stressing the creative aspects of the engineering design process. But more importantly, our collaborative is a way, excuse me, to treat teachers as professionals, to treat educators as professionals. Yes! Um, to give them opportunities to be leaders, but more importantly, to celebrate teachers. I'm an advocate for teachers, for students, and school communities. And because you are here today, even our very youngest, publicly supporting teachers, students, and school communities, you are an advocate. Congratulations. All right, guys up front, now that you're advocates, you have four questions you got to answer. One, what is worth advocating for? Two, why is it important to be an advocate? Three, what does it cost me? Your parents are more worried about that than you are. And four, do advocates make a difference? Yes! Oh, you're going ahead of me. All right, let's think about this. What is worth advocating for? For all of us here today, we're demonstrating that our children and the people we entrust to take care of them in public education are worth fighting for. From our custodial staff to our cafeteria staff to our pre-K teachers, our K-5 classroom teachers, our assistants, to those that teach specials like the arts and media and technology and foreign language, and of course our administrators, all are worth advocating for. We all know that public education is the bulwark of our democracy and that educating all children is important for the future of North Carolina. We also believe that in order to provide the best education for our children, our General Assembly needs to make policies that are supportive. Yes. We also need our General Assembly to fund those policies. Yes. Yes. And we need to make sure, get this one, are you listening kids, that our policies make sense. Yes. Yes. So here's a thought, why don't we ask the schools if they make sense. The majority of mandates, policies, and budget decisions that are made in these buildings around us, you must know, they directly impact our children, they directly impact our school personnel, and they directly impact the communities around our schools. So why is being an advocate important? When we're silent, people think we agree. When we don't say something, they might even think we applaud their decisions. I don't know about you, I can only speak for myself. But as an educator for more than 30 years and the parent of a public school student and one who graduated, who's right, where is she? She's around here with the camera. Guess what? She's getting her master's in film, which is an art. Um, Now I lost my place. Oh, there were many times when I was silent. Now I may have said a word or two under my breath. And I may have said something to my colleagues. But I did not speak publicly. We need to know that as advocates, we have to speak out publicly. This is important because when we state publicly that a mandate like this one is ineffective or even harmful to our children, and we speak out collectively, we can make a change. All right, so here's this one. How, How much does it cost to be an advocate? Well, that depends on how much time and energy you want to devote to it. I am extremely grateful for Renee and Micah and Sherry and all of the speakers for their work to make this happen today. Thank you, yes, thank you. I imagine it costs them time away from their families, uh, financial equipment, I mean financial investment on equipment, for permits, for travel, for time they lost sleep, I'm sure. 
But the wonderful part is that being an advocate for your children can also cost you nothing and the rewards are tenfold. So that brings us to number four. Does being an advocate make a difference? Yeah! Heck yeah! Heck yeah, it makes a difference. Our goal today is to make sure that our current North Carolina General Assembly knows that they cannot make policies, laws, mandates, and budget decisions that hurt our schools and children. We will not allow it. That's right. We're making it clear today that we will not sit by, we will not watch, we will be advocates on behalf of our students, our children, and our teachers. So, I got a little game for us. Y'all ready? Down there? Yeah. yeah. All right. After learning and thinking about advocacy, if you're excited and ready to accept your role, and these signs are great, by the way, then after I make a statement, are you listening? You're going to say, just like me. Okay? Here's my first one, just for fun. I'm cold. Just like me. There we go. I'm a parent, a teacher, school personnel, or an interested citizen who supports public education for all our children. Just like me! I believe that the arts and other programs like pre-K, foreign language are important for our children and should not be cut by, the pu by our General Assembly from public education. Just like me! I do believe that education is bipartisan. Yes, right. It's an issue it's an issue where we have to come together because we have to do what's right for our kids. Just like me. I expect my General Assembly to make decisions that help my children, not hurt them. Just like me. I expect my General Assembly to do what is needed to recruit and retain North Carolina's amazing, great educators. Just like me. I will not, I will speak up, excuse me, when I know what is right for families and children is not being addressed by our representatives and our senators. Just like me! You, my friends, have just advocated on behalf of your children and you deserve a hand. Woo! So I want to close with this. We, all of us, that means parents, teachers, administrators, North Carolina citizens, must continue to pay attention and be vigilant in Raleigh because that impacts our schools. Each of us will contribute our own level of advocacy, what we can afford to, in regards to our time, our energy, and our financial commitment. I would like you to know that I'm an advocate for teachers, for students in school communities, and Renee gave you my secret, but I am announcing my commitment to run for North Carolina Senate District 30 against <laughs> against North Carolina Senator and President Pro Tem Phil Berger. I am doing this. Run, girl, run! Yes. Where were you when I was making up my slogan? I like that. I'm doing this because I want to be an advocate for our children. I want to be an advocate for parents, for schools, for school communities, because I believe public education is that important. Thank you. When you leave here, let your friends and neighbors know that they can also be advocates for public education. Thank you.